I think this is going to be your best episode ever. Whoa. This episode has been so extremely highly requested. You know I had to cover it. Season 5, episode 15 of Catfish, Spencer and Katie. Spencer says that he's a typical guy living in Knoxville, Tennessee, and he met Katie on a texting app, and they've been talking as much as humanly possible for the past six years. So from 2010 to 2016. I was 11. <laughs> Katie lives in California and she finally told him that she was ready to go all in and he was so excited to meet her but she killed that idea within a few weeks without ever explaining why. She claims that she sent him an email explaining why she needed to end their relationship but he never received anything and he thinks it's been lost in some sort of cyberspace black hole because she never resent it. Like maybe she lied. Maybe she never sent anything. What a crazy thought. Neve and Max are like, okay, this is so unclear. Like, this is weird. Very weird. So they quickly just hop on a call with him, and Spencer says that- I think this is gonna be your best episode ever. Sir, what? They've been doing this for like five seasons now. What makes you think that your story will automatically be the best one they've ever covered? Be fucking for real. You've been talking to a girl online for six years. Lots of people do that. Stupid, but they do it. So Neve and Max are like, okay, tell us why you think that. Then this fool fixes his non-existent lips to say that the Katie he's talking to is Katie Perry. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. And even Max just bust out laughing. <laughs> what? And Max is like, uh, isn't Katy Perry dating Orlando Bloom? Mind you, now her and Orlando Bloom are married. So then they ask why he thinks that it's really her and he says that they've been talking for so long and there are so many little details about her life and childhood stories that only she would know that she shared with him. I don't know if people realize this but you could find out almost everything about celebrities online. Especially ones like Katy Perry because she was never really private about stuff. But Neve and Max are like, okay, clearly not convinced. And it's almost as if I, you can see the wheels turning in their head, that little hamster on the wheel thinking like, why did production choose this man to be on the show? Like, do I have to do this? Can I quit now? So Neve says that this is one of the most ridiculous things he has ever heard. And that's saying a lot because he's been doing this for five seasons. So Spencer says, I know it's ridiculous. I haven't told anybody, obviously. Okay. You don't find that suspicious. But you don't think that's a problem? You don't see that as a red flag? Okay, sir. So he says that when they met on this random messaging app, her name on there was Katy Perry. And Max is smart and says, okay, well then it must be her. <laughs> Spencer ignores Max's comment. And he then says that they had an immediate connection. They immediately started saying, I love you back and forth. And the whole thing was pretty cool. This man is the worst type of Delulu. He says that after she said that she wanted to be completely attached to him, be in a full-blown in-person real life relationship, she then deleted her messaging app profile. She didn't say why, but she said she sent him an email explaining everything. He never got it, so he wants to see her face to face. See if there's a future. Sir, be so fucking for real. Please and thank you. Please, please, please and thank you. Max asks on a scale of one to ten, how much do you believe it's really her? And this fool says a thousand. You stupid. This is the type of man who would easily get scammed. Mm -hmm. He would just lose all his money. He then says that they've only spoken on the phone one time. The phone call cost him damn near $300 because she was talking to him on a phone from Canada. So they're like, Why does Katy Perry have a phone from Canada? And Spencer said that he didn't really question it. She was on tour in Canada at the time. It made total sense. This man is ridiculous. That doesn't make sense. Neve said that nothing would make him happier than bringing him to Katy Perry, but he wants Spencer to understand that it is very unlikely. Neve then says that he's usually the one in these situations that remains hopeful and optimistic, but I'm going to abandon that role on this episode. Like, this is not Katy Perry. Just, I need you to be for real. I need you to know that before we come help you. So Spencer says that Neve's doubt will make it even more sweet when it is her, and then he says that the catfish team is making his dream come true. This man's about to get his heart broken. Neve and Max then hop off the call and they are speechless. I mean, what is there? What, what can you say? Like they don't have anything to say, which is very rare because those men are always running their mouth. They're just letting Spencer take them on this very weird ride, which good for them. Couldn't be me. So they then head to meet Mr. Katy Perry in real life in Knoxville. When they land, Max makes it very clear that Spencer is not talking to Katy Perry, but he hopes that talking with Spencer will give them some sort of insight into what scam this catfish is running because there's no reason you're just gonna pretend to be Katy Perry for six years, for no reason. 
but you have to be getting something out of it. They get to Spencer's house and Max asks him what he likes about her. And Spencer says that she's funnier than him, smarter than him, and she has a huge heart that is just full of life. Or I saw this video and it was basically just talking about how like women are funnier than men and I'm not saying I agree or disagree with that but then in the comments this one girl was like yeah I now that I'm thinking about it I think I'm funnier than any man I've ever been out with and I don't think I'm funny at all that's what this made me think of I just don't see Spencer as the hee hee ha ha funny type of guy he then says that he also thinks that it's her because she shared some songs with me, some music before they even were released. She only sent links to YouTube videos, so they go back, look at the links, and almost all of the videos now are unavailable. Spencer has almost 2,000 emails from the catfish, which is kind of crazy, but I feel like that's not actually that crazy because 2,000 emails, I don't know. I feel like converted to text, it wouldn't sound that bad. Max then says, and like gives him a little shake, tells him that if they were really unreleased tracks from Katy Perry, then they would have somehow been very clearly linked to her. They wouldn't be posted on random people's pages and she would have just sent you links to them. She would have sent you the actual song. But Spencer says that- they Part of the, the fun for her was, was keeping me kind of guessing. She loved to keep him guessing. Lord have mercy. This is crazy. This is real crazy. They had serious discussions about him moving to California, about them eventually getting married, having kids, and he even went and made an engagement ring for her using his great grandma's emerald. He then shows them the ring and it's beautiful. Like it is a really beautiful ring and clearly it has a lot of sentimental value because it it's a family heirloom. And it's clear that he spent a significant amount of money on it. How much of your savings has oh, gone into this? 25% of it probably. He spent 25% of his savings on this ring for the person he thinks is Katy Perry. This man is crazy. Not in the good way. Not in the way that I like crazy. It's too crazy. Max then says that he feels bad and he doesn't want to break Spencer's heart, but nothing he's shown them has been good enough evidence of anything and that what evidence he does have is kind of sloppy. Like there's nothing indicating that it is in fact Katy Perry. So Neve and Max then head out. So the old duo gets to investigating. Neve says that it's going to be either very easy or it's going to be nearly impossible to figure out who she is because Spencer only has a phone number and an email for her, which is not a lot of information. The phone number comes back linked to a cell phone in Calgary, Alberta, but absolutely nothing else. The email comes back linked to a blonde woman named Harriet who lives in England. And Neve says, um, wait a minute. But this girl's hot. The woman was too stunned to speak. I said it in another video and I'll say it again, but I stand by the fact that men and I have very different definitions of what hot women look like, but I think it's weird that that was Neve's first reaction when having a breakthrough in the case. Like, I'm giving him major side eye. That's weird. The email was linked through her Ask FM and that's why they were able to find her so easily. So Max is like, who is this chick? And they go to the Ask FM profile and her bio is really weird. I sold my soul to Lady Gaga. If you don't like Lady Gaga, I'd probably hate you. Meow, meow, bitch. But I wouldn't expect anything less from a girl who's been pretending to be Katy Perry for at least six years. So then they're like, mm, is she really in England? So then they decide to look for her on Facebook. They find her right away. And she does, in fact, live in England, but she's originally from Alberta. Neve keeps being creepy while Max is being more reasonable about the situation and about her looks. Love you, Max. So they go scroll through some of her posts on her page, and they see that she also posts about Katy Perry, which makes it clear that she's a Katy Perry fan. They conclude that this page feels real, and someone posted a message on her wall named Amy, so they decide to reach out to Amy and ask her to give them a call. Hey, Amy. We're making an episode of Catfish and your help. Please get back to me as soon as you can, all right? They decide that they need to go back and talk to Spencer, so they head over to do just that, and he's actually there with his brother. But his brother has no idea what's going on. I feel like this would be a crazy way to find out your brother thinks he's in a relationship with a mega famous celebrity and he wrote into Catfish to confirm what he knows, what he thinks he knows. His brother's name is Sam. Sam and Spencer are such basic ass names. Like, Lord, I need y'all to do better. I need y'all to step a little bit harder with these baby names. I'm begging you. Sam then says that- oh, I've seen your movie before. Oh, really? You saw the doc? Yeah. He knows who Neve is because he watched the OG Catfish documentary, which a lot of you have been requesting that I cover, and I'm going to do it, I promise. I just don't know when, but I'm going to do it. Neve then explains the premise of Catfish the TV show, since Sam had never heard of it, and then he lets Spencer take the lead, take over. Spencer says that he's been talking to someone for the past six years who he is deeply in love with, 
And then he drops the bomb that it's Katy Perry. And Sam, he looks like he's in pain when he hears this news. Everybody's so creative. Max then puts the battery in this man's back, which like, why would you do that? And he tells Spencer to tell Sam about the engagement ring, and then he goes to get the ring to show Sam. While Spencer walks away, even Max asks Sam, What do you think? Sam says that it's an incredible story. It's too incredible to be true. And I feel like that was the nicest way of saying my brother's off his fucking rocker. <laughs> Sam then says that Spencer doesn't ever get up and do anything incredible, so this behavior is very much outside of the norm for him. Then Spencer comes back and shows him the ring, and Sam says that he's glad that he met someone who he's excited to be with, who he's in love with, and he says that he promises not to tell their mom, and then he leaves, which is probably a good time to make an exit. Spencer says that he feels really good about telling his brother, and he says that his confidence level is still at a thousand. I wish one day that I will have the confidence of a cis straight white man in anything that I do in life. I'll be unstoppable. So they decide to fill him in on the findings of their investigation. He says that he's never heard of someone named Harriet ever. Katie has never brought up someone named Harriet. And they show him the Ask FM bio and Spencer says that it doesn't sound like her. She doesn't say meow meow bitch. Especially because she's not the biggest Lady Gaga fan. And he's like hesitant to say something, so they have to like pull it out of him and they're like, what? And he says that Katy Perry actually hates Lady Gaga. He doesn't feel like Harriet is the person he's been talking to. Oh lord. Then they show him Harriet's Facebook profile and they show him that she is actually a pretty big Katy Perry fan. They tell him that they're confident that he is in fact actually talking to Harriet, who lives in the UK, who is pretty cute, according to Neve, which I feel like he should stop bringing that up. It's irrelevant. This man thinks he's in love with Katy Perry, so how Harriet looks is not gonna matter to him. Spencer then says that their writing style is different, it doesn't match, and Max says that Spencer just needs time to process all of the information. But Spencer then says that he's pretty mad, and it does in fact look like Harriet is who he's been talking to. He's mad- So you're ruining like my life right now. For what? Because you're an insecure girl? She had six years to tell him the truth, and she's now ruining his life. For what? For why? Neve says that they can in fact go to England, but ultimately it's Spencer's call. Max says that at any time, if Spencer wants, they can stop this whole process right now. And I feel like Neve and Max were both hoping that they wouldn't have to keep going with this episode, but Spencer said, fuck yeah, let's do it. I want her to apologize to my face. So the next morning they head out. But before the next morning, we find out that Spencer made a little vloggy vlog and he said in this little vloggy vlog of himself that he has been up thinking and he says that he went back, listened to a bunch of Katy Perry songs, a bunch of the albums, and a lot of the songs have little clues for him within. It's up to me to figure it out, but I figured it out. So he is still fully 100% confident that Katy is in fact the person that he's been talking to. I'm fully 100% confident it's Katy. And Katy purposely planted the Harriet seed back in 2010, and we are only bearing witness to that whole thing coming to fruition. So he thinks basically she's just testing him to see if he really is going to keep the faith that it's her, but it's not her. This poor, poor, sad, sorry man. So Neve and Max then arrive to pick up Mr. Katy Perry, and on the way to the airport, Spencer mentions that he told his brother, Thinking I'm meeting Katy Perry, possibly. So Neve and Max are like, what? Come the fuck on. Wait, wait, what? Come on. Spencer says that he hasn't ruled out meeting her as a possibility yet. Girl, 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 girl. Oh, Sir? This girl is delusional. Please be so fucking for real. Please. And Max says, dude, you are not talking to her. And Neve says, well, weirder shit has happened. And Spencer says, really? And you can tell that Neve instantly regretted that statement because he says, well, generally, just like, yeah, weirder things have happened. Doesn't mean that you're going to meet Katy Perry, though. So they arrive in London, England. They do a little bit of sightseeing. But the next day, Neve does a horrible British accent as they head to Spencer's room. Let's go down the hallway. Fetch our lad. Hello, Gov. Hello. Top of the morning. Hello. So Amy, who they originally wrote to, who was on Harriet's page before, if you remember, if you're paying attention, you're keeping up wrote back to them and she says that she will do whatever she can to help so Neve gives her a call. She says that she's confused and wondering if this is real. They confirm it is real, like we need your help, please, we beg you. She says that Harriet is her ex-girlfriend and that Harriet is- She's 100% gay, yeah. 
Okay, I'm that's pretty certain. Neve informs Amy of their plans to meet up with Harriet and asks Harriet to let her know that they spoke and that they want to meet up with her, which she agrees to do. So Spencer then says that that was huge evidence that it's not Harriet that he's been talking to, and it is in fact Katy Perry, which doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Denial is a river in Egypt. At this point, that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. He's just looking for things to confirm that he is talking to Katy Perry and that it's not Harriet when it is in fact fucking Harriet. Neve says that- Have you ever driven in England before? Uh... <laughs> He's never driven in England before and for some reason they decide to let him do it anyways. He then is the big strong man of the group and changes a pop tire and then they arrive at the hotel and they just wait for Harriet. Neve says that he's worried that if they don't meet Harriet, then Spencer is going to keep thinking that it's Katy Perry. The receptionist then calls them and says that Harriet is here, and Neve is like, what, what, what? We'll be down shortly. So then they run to get Spencer, he says that he's ready, and Neve asks him if he needs some deodorant or something, and he's like, no, I put some on. And then he lifts his um, armpit up to ask if anyone wants to smell. Anyone want to smell? No, you're good, you're good. Awkward silence. They say he's fine, and they head down. Just like a keynote for all my besties, if someone asks you if you want to put on deodorant or if you need deodorant, they're trying to tell you you stink in like the most polite, friendly way. So like, go put some on. Go put some on. So they head downstairs and she is waiting for them in the garden. So they head over to her. They all shake hands and Spencer just awkwardly laughs. And I feel like he's laughing because he's uncomfortable, but also because he's like, yeah, I just know Katie's testing me right now. Be fucking for real. Harriet confirms that she has in fact been talking to Spencer for the past six years. And you don't know Katy Perry. No. Which like, duh, we didn't think you did. Then Spencer's like, is there anything you want to say to me? And she's like, I <laughs> I'm sorry, I guess. Girl, what do you mean you guess? You're either sorry or you're not sorry. There's no guessing. Then Neve is like, mm, that's not the thing you kind of half-ass apologize for. And she keeps nervously laughing, and then Neve gets mad, asks her, is there anything about this situation you find humorous? No, I don't think it's like funny. And I just feel like it's crazy how Neve's wow, she's smoking hot attitude switched up after finding out she's gay and now he's getting mad at her. Max then says that Spencer believed that you were Katy Perry because you knew so much about her. And Harriet says that everything she knew was just because she was a huge fan. She was literally obsessed with her, which is kind of crazy. And we could get into a whole thing about parasocial unhealthy relationships, but we're not gonna do that. Just this is crazy to do for six years. Spencer then says that he kept Googling everything she did for six years to confirm that it was true. And he says that he feels like if this was in fact their first time meeting after talking for all this time. I'd feel like more excitement maybe, more, you would feel it from she, her. Right. Delulu Queen. Mr. Katy Perry is the new leader of the Delulu Queens. He asks Harriet where they first met and Harriet says on the app, like she's just being vague. So this makes me think that she was probably on a lot of different apps and she just didn't remember which one they met on because she was talking to so many different people. Spencer then confidently says with his whole chest and his lack of lips. So Neve is like, oh my God, here we go. Here we go. If it's not her, then who could it be? And he says, it's really Katy Perry. I mean, really Katy. Lord have mercy. So everyone looks dumbfounded, even this member of the crew, and his reaction is taking me out. Sidebar, something is just off about Harriet's vibe. It's just weird. I don't know what it is exactly. She looks very dead behind the eyes, and I can't explain why, but something's just off about her. But at the same time, something is very off about Spencer also. So if she weren't gay, like, they probably would have worked out. Neve then says, dude, it's her. And Max says, You can't possibly think it's still Katy Perry. I do. He does in fact think it's Katy Perry. So Neve and Max then practically beg Harriet to say something that is going to pop his Delulu bubble. She then starts saying random facts about him. Your middle name is Ray, dressed up as that hot sauce for Halloween. He then asks what they would have named their kids. Like they talked about this before. So she lists them off and Spencer's like, nah. It's not her. So they're like, did she get the names wrong or something? No, she got the first the two names right. You need to leave. So she got them all right. So why wouldn't it be her? Why wouldn't it be her? So then Neve and Max get loud and mad at him. Dude, I'm there's, sorry, dude this man. is not. You remember they're not every... getting punked it right now. There, there's it no. This is it. Like clearly, this whole thing is ridiculous, and they are just frustrated and fed up with the foolishness, with his foolishness. So Spencer then says that. I think that Katie would get a kick out of me getting punked a little bit. 
Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I feel like this would have been one of the most frustrating episodes to film ever. I don't know how they did it. I would have quit. I would have literally quit. Spencer then says that he feels like she got some pretty important details wrong, so it's not her. And Neve and Max are like, yeah, those weren't important details to her. She doesn't care. <laughs> I feel like that was a little bit mean, but that was the reality check that he really needed. Like, she's not going to remember those things because they weren't important to her. Like, she she doesn't give two flying fucks. So Neve then says that Spencer found out the truth, but he still wants to just believe what is going to make him feel better. They then decide to turn their frustrations to Harriet and tell her that she needs to think about how her actions have impacted Spencer. As weird and crazy as he might be, it has a heart. And he was giving it to you a hundred percent for six years of his life. It's like Neve. Come on now, babes. Why would you say, regardless of how weird he is, why would you throw that in there? That was not necessary. So we then decide to call it quits and meet up the next day. Then Max asks him again on a scale of one to ten, how sure are you that you're talking to Katy Perry? Spencer says that he's at a nine. What the hell are we gonna do now? So we've come down from the thousand, but still nine out of 10 is too high for this situation. Spencer says that at the end of the day, the personality doesn't match. You've only talked to this person one time on the phone and you've only messaged. People can fake their personality through messages. Then Max says, There's no Katy Perry at the end of this rainbow. There's not even a girl who's in love with you. You still ate that little one, yeah, that yeah, little one yeah, thing, ate that one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was harsh as hell. Someone need to say it, but maybe they just didn't need to say it like that. That was kind of mean. <laughs> so the next day, they meet up with Spencer, and he says that he feels good, but now on a scale of 1 to 10, he's at a 1 for how sure he is that he's talking to Katy Perry. He says that he was just gullible, and he just kept feeding himself whatever information would confirm the lie that he was believing. He says that out of Harriet today, he just wants some awareness about what he's gone through. He just wants her to acknowledge that what she did was fucked up. Neve says that it would probably be good if Neve and Max go and talk to Harriet without Spencer first and then bring him around just to see if things can go better than they did the day before. Then we get a clip of cows fucking and it's like, why did you show us this? Did we need to see this? Was this necessary? So they meet up with Harriet and she says that she does feel better than yesterday. She's less nervous. Neve then says that Spencer had a hard time understanding how different her personality is and Harriet says that she wants to explain that to him because when she started the profile, she was really young and she wanted to emulate her confidence, that her fun personality that I still might not have. She said that she's still shocked that Spencer believes that he was talking to Katy Perry, which me too, I would be shocked too, because there's no way you're getting fooled by like a young ass child, a Canadian child at that. Be fucking for real. Who's from Alberta. <laughs> She said that she wanted Spencer in her life because he's so accepting. And if he could accept that she was Katy Perry, which clearly is not believable, then he would accept virtually anything else about her, which is actually insane. That sounds kind of psychotic to me. She said that she feels guilty that she made him get a little bit crazy with this belief that he was in a relationship with Katy Perry. Neve then says that it's good that she is a lot warmer than she was the day before and Max says that she needs to be accountable and responsible to Spencer so they take her back to the hotel. Spencer is really nice to her and today he seems somewhat normal so I'm like okay maybe he isn't that weird of a guy. Maybe he really just did 100% believe that he was in love with Katy Perry. That's weird. Which is weird but I don't know this whole thing is weird. So Harriet and Spencer then go talk on their own and Harriet apologizes for everything that happened yesterday, but more specifically her lack of communication. Spencer says that he can understand how all of this would be fun for a little while. For six years, I mean, that's, it had to be exhausting for you. So he is trying to be understanding to her, which is nice. She says that like just all started because I lived like in the middle of nowhere away from like any like friends houses. She was just isolated and she thought it would be easier to talk to someone online and she aspired to be like Katie. So it was enjoyable to feel pretty like that and bubbly and outgoing and have money and all those type of things. She realizes that she did in fact lose herself while she was doing this, but she did look forward to talking to him. She then cries and talks about her dad dying. My dad died two years ago. I'm sorry. And Spencer feels empathetic towards her, which is clear. I just feel like, it, I don't know. This, it reminds me of Ashley Taylor, where she's talking about like her sick relatives 
and uses that as a justification for her catfishing. I just feel like it's not an excuse. But if people are going to buy it, then of course people are going to keep using it, right? She then said, Knowing that I've hurt you, acknowledging that is hard for me. Because she hadn't thought about it. What the fuck is going on? But then apologizes again. It's crazy to catfish someone for six years and then think that you're not going to hurt them. Psychotic behavior. So then Spencer says that he came in with an open heart and he's got to protect that. Harriet does say that his heart was valued when he was with her. Harriet says that she does in fact care about him, but she's not straight, so the whole thing is kind of weird. She wishes him well, and Spencer says that he'll be okay, he'll be fine, and- Bad's in the past, Yeah. So what's ahead will be good. So it ended off on a really high note, even though it started off on a crazy nut job low note. So in our two month check-in, Neven Max first speaks to Spencer, and it looks like he's doing better. Max asks him once again, on a scale of one to 10, how sure are you that you were talking to Katie? And he says zero. He's cured. And thank God, thank God, we finally arrived back at reality. He is no longer the Delulu queen. Or maybe he is. I know something you don't. I know something you will never know. He says that he's stronger now and he's just doing his best to not be so gullible. He and Harriet haven't spoken at all. Fine, I've been a couple emails. Oh. She just hasn't reached out. So you're like, oh, that's weird. Let's talk to Harriet. Harriet says that she feels better now that everything's done and she regrets what she did. She says that the email she received from Spencer, it wasn't what she was expecting. And they're like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? She says that the emails were about how Spencer met a girl in England. That he was confused as why he didn't meet Katie. And said that he loved her. And then he said like, I love you and stuff. So Harriet outed him by saying that he at the time fully believed that he was in fact still talking to Katy Perry and he did love her and that the whole Harriet thing was just a farce and he decided to just act like he didn't really believe that for the camera so Neven Max would get off his back. Uh, 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 it's the way you act, act, act. So they call Spencer again and they're like, what the fuck, Spencer? Spencer, we just spoke to Harriet. Spencer says that- We're still doing some investigating. <laughs> you guys were done. His investigation was not complete. He wanted to be 100% sure that it wasn't Katie, and he's pretty sure now. Which is like, um, so you're pretty sure? So you still have that hope? So then, Neven Max tell him a couple more times there's no Katy Perry involved, and he says, Yeah, everybody knows that. Everybody but you, apparently. Big dummy. This episode is exhausting. Spencer needs help because something just seems off with him believing this. And Harriet needs help because she didn't seem to have any real compassion or remorse and she didn't think about what she was doing when she was doing it. But then also one thing, they didn't say how old she is. So I'm like, were you talking to him as a minor? Like Spencer got fooled by a minor? Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. Whole thing is weird. I wish Spencer the best. I hope that he found a nice lady in real life to give that beautiful ring to. And I hope that he doesn't date online anymore. He's too gullible for that. But I hope those of you who have been requesting this episode enjoyed my breakdown, enjoyed my review of it. A mess, child. A fucking mess. <laughs> but I thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments below because I need to hear what you think. I didn't like how creepy Neve was when they first saw what she looked like. Oh, she's so hot. Focus. Focus. But as always, if there are any episodes of Catfish or any other show that you would like me to cover, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. You can also send me a DM on Instagram. Again, thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And I will see you in the next video.